Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from OnlinePhotographyTraining.com. Welcome to my video series, Mastering the Nick Collection. Several years ago, the Nick Collection of plugins was the number one set of plugins for Photoshop and Lightroom. Cashing in on their success, they sold off to Google. Google marketed the suite for a couple years with a few updates. Then they announced that they would not be updating the software any longer, and they made it free to download. Around that time, I did a set of training videos on the software that proved to be very popular. Recently, the company DxO purchased the rights to the Nick Collection and announced that they would be developing and updating it. Although it's no longer free, it is nice to have a caretaker for this software because it is very good. With all the good things happening with Nick, I decided to update my training videos on the product. This new series will be more in-depth and thorough than the previous series. Please be aware that I have no affiliation with the company, I'm not being paid by them to do these videos, and if you purchase the software, I will not be making a commission on the sale. With that said, if you could do me a favor, if you like these videos, please click the thumbs up button and share them. Finally, if you can make a donation, I would greatly appreciate it. That info is in the description below this video, along with a link to my code of ethics statement. Let's get started. In this episode, we're gonna continue our discussion of Sharpener Pro 3, the raw pre-sharpener by Nick Software. We're going to be using it as a Photoshop plugin, and we're going to be talking about color ranges. Now, I mentioned in our last episode that Sharpener Pro 3, the raw pre-sharpener, does not work as a standalone product. You have to use it as a plugin. And in our last episode, I used it as a Lightroom plugin. Now, to use it as a Photoshop plugin is very easy. And as I've preached in every single Nick video where I've used the product as a Photoshop plugin, I've said that you should apply it to a smart object or commonly called a smart layer. The reason is if you do it that way, you'll be able to go back in and readjust things. If you don't apply any of these Nick plugins to a smart object, then whatever you do in the plugin is going to get baked into that layer and you won't be able to go back in and readjust anything. So I have this image of the tiger. We're in Photoshop and it's just the background layer. I want to create a smart object. Now, what I recommend you do is duplicate the background layer. Layer. If you have a Mac, hit Command J. Hit Command J, there we go. If you have a PC, hit Control J and you'll duplicate that layer. Now, on this top layer that is called layer one, right click on it, then go down to Convert to Smart Object. And it will just take a second and there it's a smart object. You can tell by that little square in the corner. So we're ready to roll. Now we want to send this layer over into Sharpener Pro 3, the raw pre-sharpener. Go up to Filter, down to Nick Collection, then down to Sharpener Pro 3, raw pre-sharpener. You'll get this warning, and I've mentioned this before, is when you use any of the Nick plugins in Photoshop as a Photoshop plugin, uh, the plugin will have, by default, a brush button there that's not there when you use it as a standalone product or use it as a Lightroom plugin. Now, I've mentioned that brush, in my opinion, is worthless anyway. When you're using it on a smart object, that brush is disabled. And that's what they're warning us, that the brush is going to be deactivated. So it's not even going to be there. So we'll click OK, because we don't care about that brush. Now, we're opened up in... Sharpener Pro 3, raw pre-sharpener. And I mentioned we're going to talk about color ranges. So I'm not even going to do anything yet. I'm going to go over here to the right panel where it says selective sharpening. And right now it says control points. Click on that drop down and you'll see color ranges. And you'll see there's three swatches. Now you could spe uh, specify three colors that you want to sharpen. So something that is a specific color and you want to sharpen that in the image. Now, you can do it two ways. You could just click on the color swatch and you could just pick a color. But I think an easier way and probably a more accurate way 
is to click on the little eyedropper that is beside the color swatch. When you click on the eyedropper, your cursor turns into the eyedropper. Now I want to sharpen the orange fur on the tiger, so I'm just going to click on the orange fur. All right, as simple as that. Now the color swatch is that color. Now I also want to sharpen the white fur, so I'm going to go down to the second one, click on the eyedropper, and I'm just going to find some white fur and click there. So we're going to sharpen that. Now I'd like to sharpen her eyes as well. So I'm going to click on this third eyedropper and click on the iris of her eye. And now that is that color. Well, I'd also like to sharpen her tongue. So I'm going, going to add another color range. I'm going to click this plus sign. And then I'm going to click on that eyedropper. And then I'm going to click on her tongue. So we have these four color ranges that we're going to be sharpening. Now I'm going to bring the opacity of the tongue color, the gray, all the way up like the other ones. So we're going to start out with all four color ranges at 100%. Now I'm just going to go to this adaptive sharpening slider at the top and I'm going to show you what happens when I turn this all the way up. We sharpened the tiger, but it really didn't sharpen anything else, did it? It just sharpened those four color ranges. Watch as I move it around. So isn't that awesome? You could really use color ranges to selectively sharpen very specific parts of your image. I'm not affecting the background. I'm really not even affecting the rest of her fur as much because it's a slightly different shade of really what the rest of her, or the fur on her face is. Now, the cool thing about this is that when you bring this up, let's say I bring this up and I like the sharpening it did for her orange fur, but I'm thinking it's over sharpening her white, over sharpening her white fur a little bit. I could go to the white color range and go to the opacity slider and just pull that down. So now we're removing some of the sharpening from the white fur or the white color range. So we could really dial in specifically how much sharpening each of the color ranges gets and you could do it individually. So if I feel that her eyes are over sharpened, I could bring the opacity of the third color range down. Or if I feel her tongue is over sharpened, I could bring the opacity of the fourth color range down or whatever. Very easy to do. Now, as far as sharpen areas, I'm going to tweak that up just a little bit too. I'm going to probably over sharpen this just a little bit because I want to demonstrate how you could come back in and readjust things. So I'm going to come back here. We're going to Tweak that up a little bit. Could bring that up a little more. Okay, let's say I'm done. I like what I did. I'm going to click OK in the lower right hand corner. Now it will apply that sharpening to our smart object or the smart layer. And I'm going to turn it off and turn it on. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I'm going to hit Command plus a couple times, three times. So you could see if you have a PC, you'd hit Control plus to zoom in. Now here's before. There's after, before, after. You can see how it really did a great job sharpening Tamari's face. Really, really did a great job. But I think I might have overdone it, right? I over sharpened it. So I'm going to hit Command-0 to fit it to screen again. Hit Control-0 if you have a PC. I want to go back in and readjust. Now that's the, the advantage of creating the smart object. We're able to go back in and readjust things. So I'm just going to double click right here where it says sharpener dot 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 sharpener. I'm just going to double click there. We'll come up with that same warning. It senses that or knows that this is a smart object. The brush button is going to be deactivated. Click OK. It opens back up into the raw pre-sharpener. And our settings are exactly as we left them with the same exact color ranges. So I could come back in here and I could dial this down because I over sharpened it. So I could bring those down quite a bit. And just eyeballing it, that looks pretty good. So now I'm happy with that. And we'll click OK. Now I should add before I click OK though, that if you found, let's say that there was something, you know, orange or white in the background and it's sharpening that as well, you could then use a negative control point 
on that color back in the background and remove the sharpening with that negative control point back there. And I think I'll do that more specifically in another episode. So in our next episode, I'm going to do one more episode, if it's okay with you guys, on the Sharpener Pro 3 Raw Pre-Sharpener, partly because I want to show you everything about it and partly because I really like saying Sharpener Pro 3 Raw Pre-Sharpener. So we're going to click OK. So we did that readjustment to our smart object. And there is our sharpened image. I'm going to zoom in again, Command Plus, three times. I'm going to turn it off, on, off, on. You can see how it really did a great job of sharpening the tiger. Her name is Tamari. So really happy with that. I think it really does a nice job. Now in our next episode, I'm going to try to tie everything together. I'm going to um, use color ranges, and then I'm going to use control points as well. And I'm going to show you how you could really um, you know, sharpen your image very specifically and um, really make it um, perfect. I, I mean, for lack of a better word. Thank you, everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.